Okay, hello everybody. Uh, we're delighted to have so many of you join us today uh, for our first webinar to discuss our MSc in Financial Crime and Compliance in Digital Societies. Um, as you, you can see, this is an online blended and part-time course. And the purpose of today's event is really to provide you with as much information as we can regarding the course, but also for you to meet the team uh, behind it. So we have a bit of an agenda in place as well for everybody today. Um, so we'll go through some, some introductions. So as I said, you can meet uh, the team behind the course. Um, we're going to look at uh, who the course is for and why I study at the University of Manchester. Uh, we'll then move on to why I study the MSD in Financial Crime and Compliance in Digital Societies. And then we'll also go on to really focus on the course content and structure. And, and as I said, how you'll learn with us as well. <laughs> Um, at the end of the event, we do have a Q&A session with our panel. Um, I will be monitoring the chat function today as well. So if you've got any questions at all, please just use the chat function on the webinar, send them over to me, and then we'll try and go through them at the end of the presentation. Um, I do appreciate we've had a lot of people uh, contacting us to say they can't make the actual event today. Again, absolutely no problem at all. If you're watching this event back and you do have any questions in regards to the course, um, or you'd like to put anything to, to the team, again, just email that through to the, the address on, on the, the slide here, study online at Manchester ac.ac.uk. But as I said, I'm very much here on the chat. So any questions at all um, or any comments you'd like to make, please just add them today. Um, and as I said, if you are watching back again, please just email through to study online at manchester.ac.uk. So it's my absolute pleasure today to hand over to our course director, Professor Nicholas Lord. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, as Lisa mentioned, welcome everybody to this webinar about this new program that we have at the University of Manchester uh, on financial crime, compliance and compliance risk in, a, in digital societies. So first of all, let me introduce myself. As it says on the screen there, I'm the academic lead and the uh, director of this program. Uh, my name is Nick Lord and I'm a professor of criminology within the Department of Criminology at the University of Manchester. And I arrived in Manchester back in 2013 and prior to that, I was at Cardiff University, where I was also researching and, and uh, teaching about financial crime related issues, but criminology more generally. So in terms of my, my research background, for the last 15 years or so now, I've been researching financial crime related issues, primarily corruption and bribery in international business. Uh, so thinking about the ways in which organisations and businesses might be implicated in bribery with foreign public officials, for instance, many of you will be aware of those kinds of issues. But I've also researched a range of other fraud related activities, as well as organized crime and uh, money laundering and illicit financial flows. So the, the, the bulk of my research is around what we call white collar and corporate crime. And I'm sure these are concepts that you're familiar with, uh, but they're also that we can discuss in more depth as well on the program, should you join us. So let me pass over to Bill, who can say a few things about himself, but I'm sure you recognise Bill already from the ICA. Yeah. Okay, good morning, everybody. Delighted to be with you. Um, I know some of you, uh, not everybody. Um, as many of you know, I used to uh, teach on the uh, PGDIP programme itself. Um, uh, my background is, uh, as I say, in relation to the programme, I'm the founder and president of the ICA, former its CEO, going back more than 20 years. I've got a legal and academic background. I wrote a lot of the course materials and manuals for the programs. Um, a bit like Nick, I've worked in a number of universities over the years, um, including, in fact, the University of Hong Kong. Um, in fact, I'm actually a graduate of the University of Manchester. And, you know, I did my master's degree there, you know, a long, long, long time ago. Um, so obviously I have this uh, long-term affiliation with the university itself. Um, now, I was responsible for designing the educational system for the ICA going back more than 20 years, whereby the ICA provides certificates, advanced certificates, diplomas, and latterly the PPG DIP program. And delighted that this master's top-up degree has come to fruition. I've been working to try and get it off the ground for more than five years, and I'm delighted that Nick and, uh, and Lisa and all her colleagues, we've managed to do that and bring it all together. So I'm really excited about the 
the, the, the coming together of this particular programme. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, if we can move on, Lisa, to the next slide, I think we want to talk about a little bit about the partnership because some of you will know quite a lot already about the University of Manchester in that you are graduates already from, in fact, the ICA's programme, which is warded in association with the University of Manchester. Now, from day one, since the ICA was, was brought into being around about the year 2000, uh, it was in partnership with the University of Manchester. There's a quality assured educational partnership between the ICA and Manchester, so that every qualification that the ICA awards is in association with them. They are the quality assurance arm of what we do. They sit on all the examination boards, they look at all the material, and our programmes are mapped against what's called the QAA, the Quality Assurance Organisation. Um, so the reality in relation to that, it's a long-standing educational partnership. Um, as I say, it's been in existence for over 20 years, and we started and still actually, actually also have as a partner the British Bankers Association, as, as was, who are now called UK Finance, and from a professional side, they've actually backed and promoted the programmes with the University of Manchester for over 20 years. So it's a long-standing educational partnership. The PPG DIP programme that you've already done um, is in fact in association with the Alliance Manchester Business School, which is one component of the university. But behind that, of course, is the overall University of Manchester. And this particular top-up program, as Nick will explain, is in association with the School of Law from that. What I would say, though, is that it's been a not, not only a unique partnership, it's been a really successful one in that the, the ICA has grown into being probably the largest compliance association in the world, probably in my view anyway, certainly one of the most prestigious. You know, and during that period of, of more than 20 years, um, we've expanded, we have students in more than 150 countries. We've trained more than 180,000 professionals during that period. And so I'm absolutely delighted that we're at this point of, uh, of bringing together uh, as almost the final phase of bringing together a master's degree from the university that ties into that. Ties into that. So that's just a little bit about the, the collaboration there. And if I can then just push on for you to say a couple of things from there. Uh, just before that, though, I would like to just talk about the, um, you know, who the course is aimed at. So, so just before I hand over to Nick, I think the, the, the point I would make here, many of you, in fact, are actually in job roles such as we are indicated on the on the board there, you know, typically heads of compliance, heads of financial crime. This particular program is a unique combination, though, of governance, risk, compliance, financial crime, leadership skills, and, and much more latterly also, uh, you know, people who are in risk roles within organisations or ethics roles. We've seen a lot more now ethics officers and risk officers officers uh, coming into these programs. There's no one set background that you need to have to come into this. This is a program that is designed generally for senior members and often board members of firms, because as many of you will know, you know, the ultimate responsibility for compliance and, uh, uh, and financial crime prevention lies with the board. So many senior board members now are actually taking qualifications and, and programs of this particular nature. But it's a unique program, this one, in the sense that it combines all of those areas, the subject matter areas, as I say, governance, risk, compliance, financial crime, but puts it in that digital context. And I think that is one of the real strengths and what makes it unique, this particular program itself. So with that, can I, can I move on there from, from there, Lisa? You absolutely can, Bill. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Bill. So why, why study the MSc? Well, I think, as Bill mentioned there, you know, we recognise that many of you are seasoned professionals in this field. You'll have substantial experience working in compliance or risk, governance, financial crime, compliance specifically, perhaps. And we're very keen with this program to enhance the professional experience that you've already gained uh, throughout the course of your careers. And also the learning that you've uh, had access to by the ICA programs. So with the MSc, we're looking to top up your, your professional experience and your learning experience thus far with some advanced social scientific, uh, academic, conceptual and theoretical perspectives, if you like, to help you make sense 
of the compliance risk that you might encounter within your business, whether that's internal in terms of the employees within your organizations and the extent to which they might encounter opportunities for violations of policies or, or perhaps even uh, criminal laws, but also the ways in which external actors to your organization might also seek to permeate your digital systems and make use unlawfully of your data and other risks that you might encounter as well. Uh, next slide, please, Lisa. So in essence, by providing you with uh, a theoretical and conceptual toolkit, we hope to help you to make a difference in the complex world of financial crime and compliance in digital societies. And I'll speak a bit more later about the actual course structure and the different units that we have on the programme. But we'll be introducing you to uh, a diverse array of financial crime risks that you might encounter, but also other compliance concerns as well, whether it relates to uh, fraud within the organisation or by the organisation within you within which you work, or to cybersecurity threats that emerge from outside, often in other jurisdictions as well. And we also focus more specifically on substantive topics like money laundering, illicit financial frauds, fraud, uh, flaws, and various fraud types as well. The programme is designed to be very flexible and practical in its orientation. And as you can see on the, the screen there, our intention here is to integrate what we call both synchronous and asynchronous aspects to your learning. That is, much of the content will be available online as textual documentation or as videos that, that we've pre-recorded that you can watch and work through alongside various tasks and activities or recommended and essential readings for you to look into. But the idea is that you can work through these in your own time. So in those terms, the format is very flexible and you can learn at your own pace. But alongside that asynchronous content, there will also be an opportunity for you to engage and interact with your course leaders. So myself and my colleague, Dr. Katie Benson, who is the other course leader on this program, and she's a, a specialist in money laundering and more specifically the role of financial and legal professionals in facilitating the, uh, the laundering of illicit finance. You'll be able to speak to us on a weekly basis through our office hours, but more uh, exceptionally, there are also residential practical masterclasses whereby you will have the opportunity to travel to Manchester and engage with us directly face-to-face -face, and of course with the ICA team as well. So fingers crossed that uh, we can move forward with those masterclasses in the coming year. So this, is, this program is industry leading and we hope that it will help you to develop your practical, actionable uh, knowledge and tools to enhance your work in governance, risk and financial crime and compliance. And one of the, the other benefits to this program as well are the opportunity for you to build and establish your global network. That is one of the, the unique benefits of this program is that we expect uh, a very diverse student cohort. That is people participating from various countries across the globe. And you'll have the opportunity to network with other like-minded people working in similar careers with similar professional backgrounds and therefore develop your expertise and your network within those cohorts. And finally, as I've touched upon already, you, you'll have access to the latest state-of-the-art up-to-date knowledge on compliance, regulation, uh, financial crimes specifically, making use of the research that I've been involved in, for instance, over the last 15 years, but also access to academic social scientific studies and empirical research more broadly that we've collated for you and presented for you in the program so you can learn about the latest data and help uh, and, and understand better the directions in which compliance risks might be uh, emerging and, and, and going, especially in terms of the digital uh, underpinning of many compliance risks today. Uh, next slide, please, Lisa. So why Manchester? Uh, as Bill mentioned, you, you may already be well aware of the benefits of studying with the University of Manchester. 
The university is a what we call a Russell Group University. That is, it's considered to be one of the, the elite research institutions in the UK. And it certainly prides itself on supporting and undertaking rigorous, robust, state-of-the-art research in a variety of areas. Uh, and in this case, or in my case, in financial crime uh, and, and economic crime. The university has a global reputation for research excellence, but also teaching and learning as well. And to give you an example of that, the criminology department that I'm, where, where I'm based was recently ranked number one in the UK in terms of its teaching and learning programs. So essentially you'll be engaging with a really top quality teaching environment and department. Some further details there on the screen now about the Department of Criminology, where I'm based. And this department is part of the School of Social Sciences, where the Law Department is also based. And we, in turn, are part of the broader Faculty of Humanities. But we do also have connections with the Business School. So undoubtedly, you, know, you have good connections already with AMBS through your ICA programmes and the accreditation process there. And I often do collaborate with colleagues in business because when we think of financial crime and compliance risks, yes, criminology as a discipline can inform us about the motivations to, to violate a particular law or how we might go about responding to or preventing particular compliance violations. But we also recognize that we require a multifaceted, multidimensional or multidisciplinary approach to understanding compliance. And that of course involves integrating knowledge, insights from business, from law, sociology, economics, organizational learning, and so on. And criminology as a discipline is very much a rendezvous subject in that it allows academics within this field to integrate those uh, often discrete uh, literatures and, and disciplines into one uh, cohesive place. And in the department, uh, you know, we do have extensive expertise and experience in research and financial crime and fraud. So not just myself, but also my colleagues also working in uh, analogous areas such as modern slavery. Again, another risk that you might encounter within your business setting, for instance. So you'll hear about uh, the, the modern slavery uh, compliance requirements in the UK as part of the, the programme. And finally, you know, just wrapping this section up, Studying the programme will allow you to integrate with and work with colleagues in a prestigious department where academic staff really are developing state-of-the-art knowledge on crime and its control, and really in those specialist areas around financial white colour, organised and cyber crimes. And I would suggest that the department is very unique in those terms to have such breadth and depth in this particular area. Uh, next slide, please, Lisa. Oh, so I think we're back over to Bill now. Yeah, can I just say one thing, one very important component Nick missed there was that we've got great football teams in Manchester. So if you are coming over here, you know, there is an opportunity to uh, nip up the road to Old Trafford. You know, if you're a City fan, don't worry. You can go to the Etihad, but, uh, you know, so that's a real positive benefit, you know. And it's interesting how many students who come over to Manchester, you know, are always asking about that as, a, as an aspect of, uh, of what we do here. Uh, that's just a a side uh, issue okay moving on then how we, how we'll benefit from the program can i just say this program is a in one sense is a continuity of what you've already done on the pg dip um and from that particular perspective some of the people involved in the pg dip such as jonathan boulder and becca dare some of the leading acad academic and practitioners that we have will potentially be involved in this particular program as well as part of the masterclass delivery supporting Nick and, and, and his team. So you'll get the benefit of the practical side of things from the ICA as well as in fact the research academic side from the, the, the university as well. So that's an important aspect. But in terms of benefit from this, I think Nick emphasised there, this is a really prestigious qualification. The University of Manchester, as I say, as a Russell Group University, has a, a terrific global reputation. And in fact, that cannot be uh, emphasised uh, uh, too strongly. So I think that's really important, first of all. The 
the uniqueness of this particular program in combining compliance, regulation and financial crime together with all of the, the issues um, around data and in fact uh, the digital side of things is, is a really important aspect, interlinking that in with leadership skills. But I think also very important, and I'm sure many of you will already have realized, and we know that from the PG dip, is the collaboration side of this, is the fact that people do meet, you know, colleagues from, a, you know, different countries, different disciplines. But you know what was a really interesting statistic? We found that, you know, when we did um, uh, our surveys, more than 50% of people who'd been on the PG dip changed their job within 12 months as a result of people that they'd met on this particular program. Now that's a staggering statistic. Now, and that, and also many of these people, in fact, form their own groups and continue with their study and will be able to bring that through into this particular program as well. So the, I can't overemphasize the collaboration and the working with colleagues and people from different disciplines and backgrounds is a really important aspect uh, of what we do. So in terms of what, how you will benefit, of course, you'll get the subject area skills. You'll see that in context. But what it will do, it will give you the confidence at that very senior level where if you are sitting on risk committees, you know, uh, ethics committees, but on, on main boards and taking that responsibility, it will give you that status, confidence and ability to do the, a job at a very senior level. So I think that would be the main things that I would emphasize from the point of view of what it's going to do. Massive career enhancement has been my experience, again, and that's only from the PG DIP side. That will be enhanced even further for those that go on and complete the, the, the master's program. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Bill. So just thinking, uh, you know, in terms of the course content and structure then, so on the program, it's a top up to the, the ICA qualifications that you've already obtained uh, in previous years. So on this program, we'll have four top up units. Uh, so, yeah, uh, these consist of three 20 credit units and then a final dissertation project. So let me just talk you through uh, what, you know, in very brief terms, what these three main modules will cover and then how the dis dissertation project will be uh, structured. I mean, as Bill just mentioned, we recognize that you, you may be seasoned professionals who operate at those senior levels within the organizations uh, where you work and often in those positions you have responsibility or ultimate decision making responsibility for uh, strategy, internal policy, compliance responses, interactions with regulators and so on and in those terms you will often have to possess a diverse understanding of varied uh, specialisms so it's a, you may have to understand the uh, the, you know, the, the ways in which they may be compliance risks around, say, fraud within the organization, as well as cyber threats from malware and external actors and other compliance issues as well. So the, the learning on these units is very much geared towards providing you with that knowledge toolkit, if you like, to be able to interact and engage with people who specialize in various different areas allowing you to recognize the need for that supra problem uh, response and therefore recognize the connections that might exist across different issues that you encounter in your compliance uh, policies. So in unit one, we will be looking at compliance and financial crime risks. More specifically, looking at how, how we can analyze and explain some of the risks that you may encounter within your business. And when we think of compliance risks, often there isn't a very simple, straightforward solution or explanation as to why a particular risk emerged within the business, why a certain individual employee sought to embezzle funds from the, the organization, or why the digital system that you have in place was vulnerable to an attack from a third party. Instead, often we have very multifaceted explanations of why these things occur. So in this unit, we'll introduce you to the latest theory on how we make sense of individuals and organizations that perhaps engage in violations of, of laws, 
and, and other uh, requirements. For instance, we'll look at the individual level. That is, in what ways might there be uh, individual propensities or motivations for uh, an employee within your organization to engage in a form of non-compliance? In what ways might the organizational structure or the policies that have been created within the business in some way facilitate the, uh, an employee making the most of an opportunity for a, a form of fraud within the organization? But also thinking more broadly, in which ways does the, uh, the economic structure within which we're embedded the, you know, the, 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 the nature of the system that within which we operate, does that generate opportunities for uh, non-compliance within certain industries? So we'll look to integrate those different levels of analysis to help you make more sense of risks as they emerge within your business setting. And also in that module, we'll introduce you to particular modes of thinking and analysis that we make use of in academia that can help you better understand the nature and organization of those violations. So for instance, we'll introduce you to something called script analysis and social network analysis. That is, you'll be able to identify particular problems that might be emerging or risks within your organization and analyze the, the procedural aspects of those violations. That is, if an employee, for instance, in your organization engaged in a particular fraud, how did they go about doing that? Which kind of resources were required? How did they recognize the opportunity? Which factors contributed to these crimes or violations taking place? And once we understand those procedural aspects of non-compliance, we can then go about designing and developing suitable policies or intervention mechanisms for reducing those or preventing those from taking place in future. So that first unit is all about analysis and explanation. The second unit focuses on the digital aspects of compliance and financial crime. So we'll look at the digital infrastructures, for instance, that underpin the, the systems that you have within your organization or your interactions with other businesses, uh, other services, third party actors, clients, customers, and so on. And the ways in which those systems themselves may be vulnerable to cyber attack or threats from outside. For instance, there might be technical vulnerabilities that exist within your system, and we can help you recognize and identify what those might be. But also your employees might be at risk of social engineering. That is where external actors seek to manipulate your employees to obtain access to a system. And of course, then they can steal or uh, use your information assets to make money in, in the cyber world, whether that's uh, in crypto markets or you know, selling your information or perhaps through malware and ransomware and trying to hold your business to ransom for payment often in cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin. So we'll analyze all those digital aspects of compliance as well. And of course, also think about the ways in which financial technologies and regulatory technologies are now emerging to be part of the solution to dealing with these risks that emerge within your business. In unit three, we'll then look towards data, evidence, and intelligence on financial crime and compliance. So first of all, we'll look to help you make sense of the, the myriad data that are out there about financial crime and compliance, whether these are data that have been generated by a governmental department or a non-governmental organization or a, a, an academic institution. In other words, how do you determine whether or not the data that you encounter from those various spheres are actually robust and rigorous and therefore can help you develop your internal policies and systems and make a more robust compliance system? It's important to understand how those data are generated to ensure that your policies are evidence-based. And then moving on from that, we'll also introduce you to uh, social scientific methods for designing and implementing your own research within your organization. That is, if you have identified a particular issue or compliance risk within your organization, how might you go about designing some research that can help inform your decision making about that particular issue? So it might be that you seek to undertake a survey within the organization or undertake some qualitative interviews to, to better understand the 
the perspectives of your employees. So there are, diff there are different methods that you can implement to generate your own data and therefore make sense of your own issues and compliance risks. And of course, that can inform the policies that you uh, develop. And then in, finally, in the, dis the dissertation project, there's an opportunity here for you to, first of all, carry out your own individual empirical research. That is, you can complete an entire dissertation of around 12,000 words, so a very significant project that will be based on your own empirical uh, research into a particular compliance issue or a financial crime issue that you've encountered within your organization. And those who choose that pathway, we would expect might have an interest, for instance, in pursuing even more advanced academic qualifications, such as a PhD, for instance, uh, those who pursue the PhD would require those foundational research training uh, methods and that experience of carrying out empirical research. And that first pathway within the dissertation will enable that. But if you're not inclined towards carrying out your own empirical research, there are two other pathways that you can pursue as well. One is a group dissertation whereby you will uh, collaborate with colleagues on the programme to jointly produce a data set or analyze some data and therefore contribute some new and original learning to a particular area. And alongside that, you would also produce a, a few shorter uh, pieces of work, such as a reflection on the process of carrying out research or analyzing data. And then there's also a third option for those of you who don't wish to carry out the full dissertation or do not wish to work as part of a group dissertation whereby you can submit a shorter extended essay, if you like, on a particular substantive topic around financial crime and compliance, as well as complete a few other uh, smaller units on how to write for academic audiences or policymakers, practitioners, and so on, how to, uh, you know, engage and reflect on the research process. So that third option is for those of you who perhaps don't have the intention to move on to more advanced study or would like to or prefer to work uh, alone. So th those are the four units and you know, there's much more information about those on the website as well, but I think I've covered quite a bit there. So in terms of the structure of each unit then, uh, so each, week, each unit takes place over a 10 week period. These, are, these run consecutively. So the first one runs for 10 weeks and in weeks one to four, you'll engage in the online learning materials, the teaching online, the opportunity to interact with your course leaders via the office hours. And then in week five, you'll have that opportunity to come to Manchester and complete the three day practical masterclass, <clears throat> excuse me. Whilst we recommend that you come to Manchester and meet with us, uh, face to face, we also recognize that there are reasons why you may not be able to do that or not wish to do to do that. And for that reason, these masterclasses will also be live streamed as well. So you can access the materials uh, from from where you work or where you where you live or watch them at a later point in time as well. After week five, which we consider to be a consolidation week, we then move on to the second part of the unit as uh, week six to nine, where we'll continue with the online learning materials before week 10, where you have the opportunity to revise, work through, seek clarification about any of the content from the previous weeks, and also move on to complete your assessment. And the assessment for the three units varies in that some of it will be written coursework, where you have to write a short essay, for instance, of around two to 3,000 words on a particular topic of interest to you, or it might consist of a, a series of smaller written projects, 500 words, which may be a reflection on the, uh, the content of the programme. Or we also have other assessment styles, such as online tests, where you can complete multiple choice uh, quizzes to, to obtain, to, to complete the assessment. So there are a range of assessment types that we have on the module. Uh, we should make it more interesting for you uh, as well. And then in unit four, that's when we move on to the dissertation project, which takes place over a 20 week period. And as part of that process, you will, will of course have access to direct supervision with myself or my colleague, Katie Benson. 
uh, where we'll guide you through the research process. Okay, next slide, please, Lisa. So how will you learn with us? Uh, next slide again, please. Okay, so we've mentioned this already, I think, to some extent, so I won't spend too much time on, on here. Just to reiterate that the materials are primarily online. The, 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 uh, the approach is blended in that it's a mixture of real-time, face-to-face content, but also uh, asynchronous content online, whereby you work at your own pace. And it's also part-time, allowing you to complete the materials alongside your working uh, week. So it's designed in a way that allows you to enhance your knowledge whilst you continue to work. We have this mix of online and blended learning and varied assessment types, as I mentioned on the previous screen, and access to uh, a diverse array of online resources and media, including academic databases. So often you might find that academic journal articles that are uh, uh, disseminated through you know, the social media, LinkedIn, wherever that might be, maybe behind a paywall. Well, the great thing about this is that you'll have access directly to those via the University of Manchester's uh, library catalogue. And then finally, just to touch on the practical masterclasses, and I think Bill is going to say a few more things about those, so I'll just pass over to Bill. Yeah, the, the Nate, many of you are already familiar with the way that the, the ICA in its PG DIP programme uh, carried out uh, masterclasses. These are essentially, it's three days, very similar to the, the, the ones that you've done on the PG DIP, where, in fact, members of the university team will mix with the, the ICA staff. Um, some of the people um, who you are already familiar with who taught on the PG DIP will also be coming on to this program as well so the format you know the interaction the way that they operate will be very very similar to the pg dip great opportunity to collaborate and i would emphasize with nick i think it's really important if you can to get across to manchester you know to do these face to face if you can we know it's not always possible for everybody but there's an awful lot of benefits in being there and the, and the networking side of things so essentially you know very similar you'll have lead speakers industry experts coming in perhaps doing sessions up to three hours which will be interactive discursive uh, exercises and and you'll be getting as to say high quality delivery from from that particular point of view yeah i sh should have mentioned as well not everybody is a manchester united or manchester city fan like bill alluded to earlier myself i'm a burnley fan and we you know we, we're a, we're a well-established premier league club as well now perhaps not quite as exciting in football terms as some of those bigger clubs but again an opportunity to travel to Turf Moor uh, if you're not interested <laughs> in Old Trafford or the Etihad. Uh, <clears throat> moving on then finally to the entry requirements, you may be aware of this already, but to be able to apply for this programme, you have to have successfully completed one of the below qualifications. So the ICA's PPG diplomas in either financial crime compliance or in governance risk and compliance. So we're very keen for you to join us and you know, add this prestigious masters to your CVs. You know, we think it can certainly enhance your, your professional practice, that ability to integrate advanced social scientific criminological insights into those more practical considerations within your organizations really is a unique blend of bringing science into practice, which we think will really help you develop your own profiles uh, moving forward. Nick, can I just add there, um, just before you, yeah. you move on to that slide, it, this is likely to be a very popular programme, particularly for the earlier cohorts uh, in relation to that. Uh, so everybody who has that qualification is eligible to come onto the programme. We don't take anybody who hasn't done the PG DIP onto the, the, the programme, but it is really important that, you know, what we will have to do is we have a cohort that starts in February, um, obviously, you know, you, we would, uh, in fact, look at uh, everybody that comes forward, but we, we are taking people initially because everybody will have the entrance qualification on a first come first serve basis. So I think it is quite important that if you are thinking of doing this and you want to do the first cohort that starts in February, that you put an application in quite 
quite quickly, I think would be something that I, I would emphasize there. There's likely to be a second intake um, in 2022, but that, that will it will but that will probably be in, in sort of September, I think, of uh, of, of 2022. So as I say, I think if you are thinking about this and you don't want to be disappointed, I would put an early application in, you know, just to, to make sure that you've got an offer on the table. Yeah, right. that, <clears throat> thanks, Bill. Uh, yeah, we, re we, re we really do expect this to be a programme in demand. So I, I would, again, reiterate what Bill said there, get your applications in soon for that February uh, intake. A few more uh, Bits of information there on the screen for you in terms of course fees and enrollment. So the tuition fee for this program is £10,000 and it's open to UK, EU and international applicants. In terms of the documentation that you would need to provide as part of your application, uh, first of all copies of course of your ICA certificates that show the subjects that you've taken and the grades that you obtained and then at least one reference academic or professional on official headed paper or stamped. And if you do, you would like more information about that application process, feel free to reach out to us, to Lisa, and we can help guide you with that process as well. I think that covers all the information we wish to share today. So Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Bill. Um, we're going to look at going on to the audience Q&A now. So I know I've had some questions come through. And, and as just as a, to reiterate what both Nick and Bill have said, um, you know, the course is already proving to be extremely popular, which is fantastic. Um, so as you said, please, if you are interested in joining us, uh, please don't sort of wait until January to submit your application for the February intake. Um, you know, please do look at applying sooner rather than later. Um, as, as both... Um, Nick and Bill said, I'm here to help you with that. So if you've got any questions at all in regards to the application process, or you'd like any guidance, just email me. I'm on studyonline at manchester.ac.uk. Um, so I'll be able to help you with that. And just one thing that really sort of jumped out to me from today's event is it's just, you know, we've had so many people join us from sort of across the globe, but it really does feel like a very close knit community. And I think that is all to do with, as I said, Bill, with the ICA, people have already studied with you, they recognize your face. It's just amazing that we've had so many people join us from so many different countries yet it still feels like a very I said close-knit community almost which which is is, is marvellous um okay so we've got some questions come through um I'm conscious of time so we will try and get through them all but if we don't as I said just email me study online at manchester.ac.uk and, and I can uh, go through that with you um so let's have a look who we've got to start with we've got lots coming through so um we've got a question with regards to how many spaces do we have on each of the cohorts um is that, it's about 25 per cohort, is it, Nick? Is that yeah. work? Yes, so we're looking to keep the cohorts relatively small. You know, we think there's, a, there's an advantage to having a smaller, more cohesive group in that you're able to collaborate, get to know your peers. So we're aiming for around 25 per uh, cohort initially. And, you know, in future that may expand. We'll, we'll, we'll just see how that plays out, really. Yeah. So we're bearing that in mind, 25 is not that many for those first cohorts. So to reiterate again, we expect those to fill up very uh, quickly. Um, we've had another question just come through in terms of um, uh, the course. It says, is it approved at all levels, so board level, international? I don't know what approved means in that context. I mean, it's a, it's a master's degree from a prestigious university. That means it's approved by every jurisdiction. It's a recognised international university. Um, now, I'm not sure what approved by the board means. I mean, it, 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 uh, whether we, if they can give a, a more specific question around that, um, they, the, then, then we might be able to help a bit more with that if that person's got a particular query in mind. Yeah, but as Bill said, it is an MSc. It's recognised yeah. internationally. It's 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 a recognised program. So it to sort of back that up. Then yes, it would yeah. be approved at all levels. So it is a, a, a master's um, program. So it, and I said it's from from the University of Manchester. So I yeah, that. and just to add to that as well, Lisa. So it, it, it's a level seven level level seven seven qualification yeah. in that that is a master's level qualification. Uh, it's recognised internationally as part of a you know, a very well recognized university. In terms of the moderation procedure, for instance, the work that you complete and the materials uh, that have been prepared for this have been scrutinized by external 
third party yeah. actors who are specialists in the field. So they've been able to uh, provide us with feedback on the content to make sure that it is appropriate yeah. for that level. And yeah. then the work that you submit will be internally moderated by the course leaders, but also by the wider uh, yeah. academic community within Manchester as well. And also yeah. will be verified by external uh, examiners as well. So the work that you produce on this course will be of a very high standard and very well recognized uh, by many organizations across the globe. We hope that answers your question. Um, we've got a question uh, with regards to the actual master classes. Um, just somebody asking whether they'll be held over the working days or the weekend. Is that that's, that's still TBC at the moment, isn't it? It, it, it is TBC, but I think my expectation is that it will be a bit of both. So they will start on a Friday and run through yeah. the weekend. And uh, that's the and way they, Nick, that's the way they ran on the PG dip. It was Friday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think that, that, that was the plan there. Yeah. And in terms of structure, I think you can expect that you will have that Friday morning or Thursday to travel. You'll have half a day of learning yeah. on the Friday some kind of activity in the evening where you get to know your, your, uh, okay. your peers and your colleagues and also the academic staff and tutors, a full day on the Saturday and then perhaps another half day on the Sunday before you then return to your respective uh, locations, whether that's in the UK or you know, international. And, and just to sort of um, reiterate that as well, once we've got the full details with regards to the practical masterclasses, I'll be sure to share that with everybody so that you all know what's going on in advance. It won't be a last minute thing. It's just, this is a very early stage of the course, even though it feels very advanced because said, we've had so much interest, it is very much, you know, we've still got a couple of things to plan. But as I said, as soon as I've got any information with that, um, I can share that with everybody. Um, I've had a question just in regards to the entry requirements again, um, you know, in terms of, of what we would accept and just to, you know, it is just the two um, PP, PG dips, isn't it? it? You've got to have achieved both of those to join the programme. Uh, either or. Yeah. So, you know, just to mention as well, currently the programme is for a closed cohort in that it's open only to graduates of those ICA programmes. So if you've completed either of those programmes, you're able to apply. Currently, other external people are not able to apply uh, for this programme. So it's very much geared to those of you who have completed those ICA uh, qualifications. I know I actually asked this question, we've had it come through on, on the chat function, just regarding dissertation, uh, people are always very in, in, you know, interested to how, um, could, do, do they come up with the topic or do we do they have to stick within certain criteria? I know, for example, I've just had a question come through regarding, regarding dissertation, can we specialise in our field? Yeah, you can, yeah, I think, yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we, we can be flexible with the approach there in that I expect many of you would have particular ideas about the dissertation topics or subjects that you would wish to investigate in much more depth. That said, if you are struggling with identifying a particular we'll, topic that is suitable for research, them. we can assist you with that. Yeah, we'll so through yeah. that supervisory relationship, we can perhaps point you towards a particular issue that we think is, is of interest and encourage you to research that or simply uh, support your, your own direction. Correct. Thank you. Um, another question that's come through um, is just, what do you think about participants from non-financial institutions? Is the context no still relevant? Yeah, absolutely. The, the reason I say that is on the PG Div. I mean, we get people from all different disciplines. You know, a lot of people do come from financial services, but it's not exclusive to that at all. Yeah, I agree as well. You know, you know, I've been preparing the materials and the content uh, in, you know, in the last year or so. Um, the materials that we produce, the knowledge is very much relevant to both financial services actors and employees, but also non-financial financial services organisations as well. So anybody with an interest in compliance, uh, with ensuring robust compliance within your organisation, or better understanding the nature of non-compliance as well, this will be of interest to you. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. So we've got a few more questions that have come through, but what I'll do for anybody who we've not covered today, I'll just, I'll be sure to, I've got all of your contact details. I'll be sure to address those direct on, on email. And as I said, if there's anything else you can think of that you'd like us to go through, uh, then please do just email me to study online at manchester.ac.uk. But it's been a fantastic webinar. I'd like to thank uh, Bill and, and Nick for, for going so in depth with the course, but also a huge thank you to everybody who's joined I said it's wonderful to have such a diverse um, interest from students from across the, the globe and as I said it really does feel like a very close-knit community uh, within the industry and um, as we said you know we are um, accepting applications now um, for the course but any questions you may have regarding the application process please just come to me uh, direct but it's been fantastic so thank you to everyone who's joined us and it's a huge thank you to the panelists. Thank you Lisa and just to reiterate as well, I'm, I'm really excited about this programme and I'm very much looking forward to working with many of you uh, that are currently you know, working in these professions and learning from you as well. So I think it would be a, a unique uh, learning experience for all of us. I think it will be. So as I said, thank you for joining. And if you're watching back, please, if you've got any questions, please do still send them through. But as I said, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.